Hungary's gold repatriation adds to growing protest against US dollar hegemony. Hungarian national bankies set to repatriate 100,000 ounces gold from England. This is not an unusual move. In recent years we have seen the likes of Germany, Austria, Belgium, Venezuela, and the Netherlands each repatriate their gold from various locations. The pace does appear to have been picking up since Venezuela decided to repatriate its 180 tons of gold in 2011. Over the past few months, 100 tons, or some 8,000 gold bars, were secretly transported from the Bank of England's vaults in London to Poland. Also inspired by Polish example, Slovakia considers repatriating gold from the UK. Serbia, later on, joined Slovakia in this sudden Eastern European gold repatriation trend. Countries across the globe are trying to shake off their dependence on the dollar by buying up the yellow metal. One example is Slovakia. It's now thinking about restoring its gold reserves from UK banks, something Poland did a week ago. Welcome to a new gold rush. It's a plot to disintegrate the US dollar. Counties are sick of giving the US their produce for nothing more than toilet paper in return. I can see the US government hiding in their deep tax paid underground military bases when the world hits the next coming catastrophe. Welcome back to the Atlantis report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. It's a 21st century gold rush. Countries around the world are looking to the precious metal to cure their dollar dependence. The main switches are China and Russia. But Eastern Europe is now joining in for its own reasons like many. Slovakia has its gold reserves in the UK, and now the former prime minister is trying to get it back. Days earlier, Poland recalled 100 tons of its gold reserves from the Bank of England, and the Polish National Bank was certainly happy about it. Other Eastern European countries like Hungary and Serbia began recalling their gold as early as last year. People in Eastern European nations are not as choked in propaganda as the decadent West is. Likewise, they know how easy it is to be played for fools. Russia has some way to go for strengthening ties to many of these nations, but it is definitely not going the wrong direction. Interestingly enough, it seems like Macron is the first Western leader to see what is happening. It cannot be trusted, but it is interesting that France is somewhat breaking ranks with Merkel and the EU about NATO. Now, the mainstream media has covered this new gold rush, but what they'd probably like to avoid is admitting that it's getting pretty close to home. Take Germany, it just increased its own gold reserves for the first time in 21 years. The global tensions caused by economic sanctions and trade conflicts started by Washington have forced targeted countries to take a fresh look at a substitute payment system currently dominated by the US dollar. Russia, China, India, Japan, Turkey, Venezuela, and Iran have all made moves away from the dollar, including dumping their holdings of US debt and increasing their respective gold reserves. Why Europe, China, and Russia are accelerating the process of de-dollarization can be understood only if the meaning of the Iran deal is adequately understood. Iran is, above all, a specific example in what Washington can do to you if you expose yourself to the US dollar for better or for worse. Tehran would not, of course, be considered particularly US friendly. But in order to participate in international trade, the Iranians had to rely on the US dollar and the SWIFT system, which handles international payments. SWIFT belongs to an international banking consortium and is even based in Belgium, within the EU. Nevertheless, the USA was able to build up enough pressure to exclude Iran from SWIFT. The United States is extensively using the dollar as a weapon. And with every transaction in dollars, one is forced to follow the American sanctions against Iran, even if the USA is not directly involved in a trade. For example, when it comes to oil exports to a European country. Europe, China, Russia, and many small countries set new initiatives every year to make themselves independent. And gold, too, plays a significant role in this slow pull away from the US dollar. But for the world financial system, none of their currencies offer a viable, fully-fledged alternative to the US dollar yet. China and Russia are buying European debt like crazy right now. They are also banking on that Europe will soon pivot eastward for large trade volumes. Many in Europe also expect this only because it makes economic sense and even from a security point of view. The EU has no intention to start a war with Russia, that is what the US and UK want. 
The US and UK are now quickly becoming less relevant. The list countries trying to rid themselves of the dollar should include Japan too. They are the second largest holder of US treasuries. Japan has been quietly dumping US treasuries, although they still use the US dollar in international trade. What hasn't been said, most other countries are simply not buying US treasuries either. And the Saudis have threatened to dump their holdings, to keep the US in line with its 1973 agreement of supporting the Saudis militarily. But, the Saudis and the UAE are toying with the idea of using the Chinese Yuan in trade. At the last OPEC meeting, 9 out of the 14 member nations of OPEC were wanting to ditch the dollar. The Saudis were the major overriding holdout at that time. In 2016, Saudi Arabia became China's top crude supplier, so it's very likely that China will get Saudi Arabia to trade oil yuans in the near future, which would represent a severe blow to the petrodollar. The dollar was doomed when it was weaponized. Obama weaponized the dollar reserve with sanctions on Russia. That triggered the crash of the commodities markets as the dollar soared. The dollar should not have been weaponized. A dollar reserve must be apolitical. When ex-President Trump came along, he sanctioned over 40% of the world population guaranteeing the demise of the dollar reserve. Obama started it, and Trump and Biden finished it. The US dollar reserve was always supposed to be neutral. Gold, for example, is neutral. If you have gold, you can trade it, but with US sanctions, if you have dollars, you may not be able to trade with the US and its poodles because the Fed doesn't like you. Maynard Keynes was afraid this would happen one day, so he proposed the Bancor as a composite currency for trade, which was a basket of currencies rather than just the dollar. So now you have the weaponized dollar. The weaponized dollar is a national security risk for every nation that trades. Who knows when they will befriend you, and you will have sanctions against you. At present, they have sanctions on 30% of the world's population. His goal is to starve out the people as in the Stalingrad siege. Thus de-dollarization is the way countries can free themselves from the tyranny of a weaponized dollar. Reserve currency has always gone to the largest trader. That is now China. Because the largest trader can dictate the currency of the contract, Australia now trades coal and iron ore in yuan. But the yuan does not have the wide distribution that the dollar has. The dollar has been the primary reserve currency since 1945. Before that, it was the pound, the French and the Spanish. China is in the final stages of making a digital yuan. This has the capacity to convert any currencies into instant digital yuan. It is unnecessary to print currency actually as the dollar reserve has done over the last 74 years. They can do it instantly. Other forms of payment, like Alipay or PayPal, are also digital exchange platforms. So converting in and out of dollars is quite easy. The Bitcoin is not a currency, it is akin to traveler's checks, so its speculation makes it unsuitable as a currency. People will lose their money on that speculation. What do dollars offer? Confidential cash transactions. Money laundering and universal acceptance. The cons. They may be manipulated, stolen, and weaponized. The dollar weaponization has become a national security risk for all nations of the world. So its demise is assured. The seeds have been planted. Also, note the US reluctance to develop crypto. Why? They want to spy on all your transactions in the US and yet retain laundering capability outside the US. It is a weapon both against you in the US and to the world outside the US. There is now competition for the dollar reserve, and each year, the dollar weakens. The euro could have replaced the dollar in about one third of the world, but the EU is dependent on the US with NATO. This political entanglement prevents that. Then we have petro giant Russia very interested in dumping the dollar, it can make exchanges in oil and now the yuan. A digital yuan is a pegged digital currency, so its value will not fluctuate with currency movements. It can't be laundered. The globalist banksters have weaponized the petrodollar to the point that many countries are trying to get away from the dollar. It will take a while, perhaps years, but the dollar is dead. These banksters, who are supposed to be so smart, are actually stupid. They did it to themselves. The petrodollar was created when we defaulted on the gold standard. America defaulted because of bankruptcy caused by the war machine. And now with the petrodollar, we've seen war after war for oil in an attempt to maintain the dollar monopoly. 
and we see the never-ending expansion of toxic waste due to the failed paradigm of oil infrastructure. The first electric car was built in 1835, 184 years ago. It's about monopoly. Monopoly. Planned obsolescence. Externalization of adverse effects and accountability. Internalization of reward monopoly of profit. The next major crisis will kill the dollar. There are two things that can throw the US dollar immediately in the tank. Number one. The massive debt that the US has accumulated and the continued devaluation of the dollar by printing more money. No one wants to be hanging on to a currency that keeps losing its value or accepting the US to pay off its debt in funny money. Number 2. If someone convinces OPEC not to back the dollar any longer, and see what happens overnight. It won't be any creeping loss of confidence, but rather, everyone will be lining up rapidly to dump the dollar or anything else with a stamp of made in the USA on it. The greenback has been very powerful for a very long time. But if countries continue to look for other reserve standards, it could mean the end for the dollar's golden age. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.